Hi guys, it's Sam from Bites Props, and today I'm gonna to show you how I finish Excalibur from the Fate series. If you wanna see how I slice this and put LEDs in it, check out my other video, and let's get started. Since the garden and handle don't need to light up, I'll prepare these differently from the blade. After taking all the support off, I'll start sanding with 80 grit where the support landed, and then 120 followed by 220, and then a coat of filler primer. I will do this two to three times until I am happy with the results. I then join the handle and the guard together using plastic welding. The method I used is in my last video. I focused on sanding the area and using Bondo where needed to hide the seam. And then it's time for more sanding. Seriously, if you don't like sanding, then I got bad news for you. Anyways, I'll wet sand with 400 and then I'll go up to 1000. For electronics, I use the same setup as my previous build. I just had to solder JST connector to the correct length of LEDs. The best way to solder LEDs is to add some solder to the wires and the copper connecting pads. And then lay the wire on top and place the soldering iron on the wire. The wire will sink into the pads and form a connection. Using the same setup makes it so much easier for cons because I just need to upload the already saved code from the laptop to the microchip for whatever animation I need for that specific prop. I do have two of these setups because usually the prop and something else on my cosplay will light up. I also did include an on and off switch on the outside of the bottom of the guard. For the diffusion, I used wax paper that I wrapped tightly around the LEDs about 10 or so times. I did this in smaller sections because it's easier than doing the full thing at once. I tried using super glue to bond the wax paper, but hot glue definitely works a lot better and it's a lot quicker and it dries faster. I sliced both sides of the wax paper to make sure they are straight as possible. A ruler would help if you can find one. <laughs> I really need to clean up, up my space. And then I placed a line of glue as close to the edge as I could. I did peel the backing off of the LEDs, but the sticky backing isn't the greatest, so hot glue to the rescue. Keep rolling your LEDs, making sure the wax paper is as tight as possible. If it starts to unravel, just add more hot glue. Remember to count how many times the wax paper goes around your LEDs, so you can do the same amount for all the other parts. I would also stir out the smallest of your blade and make sure it still fits. I did just enough that it fits snugly into the tip and it won't move around. So this will all depend on what blade you're doing, so just experiment to see what works best for you. For this build, I ended up using 50-50 5mm neopixels with 60 LEDs per meter. The sword has around 60 LEDs in it. I'll have to count that later when I go to coat this. <laughs> Oops. Diffusion is really hard to get right in tiny blades because to do proper diffusion, you either have to have the LEDs further away, pointing away from where the source is, or have more LEDs in the strip. More LEDs is hard to achieve because you would need a bigger battery source. And don't forget, always make sure to check your LEDs before you add them to the sword. And now it's time for the blade assembly. I use bar clamps on the edge of the piece, just tight enough to hold the sword up. And then I add JV weld to the one side and slide it between the clamp. If it's too tight, you can pinch the blade to make it fit between the two clamps. And once you have the correct position, tighten the clamp and wait 24 hours. I do use super glue sometimes for gluing blades together. I just find JB Weld is stronger, but sometimes you don't have time for that. Plus, when you use XCC 3D, it will add some strength to the joints. Once the glue is set, I will do a pre sand between the seams. This just helps the XCC 3D later down the line and helps with less sanding. Now it's time to insert the LEDs that were prepared earlier and glue on the remaining tip. I prefer leaving the tip off the sword when printing because it becomes easier to place the LEDs properly at the top. The wax paper pretty much holds the LEDs in place so they don't wiggle or move out of the center of the blade, but I did add a dab of glue just for extra security. You were totally going to get sick of me telling you this, but check your LEDs at every step. I speak from experience. 
I decided to paint the symbols on the front of the blade with an opaque paint so they will show when the LEDs are on. I did this before using XTC 3D because it will fill in any of the smaller indents from the symbols. You can make a mixture of acrylic paint and water, fill in the lines, and be able to wipe off any paint that was outside of the lines easier. In order to keep the LEDs from moving within the blade, I melted two slits on the edge of the blade and thread string through. Here I am using a zip tie, but I realized later that it wouldn't fit in the hilt, so I swapped it to thread and that just worked fine. After that's secured, I passed the end of the LED connected to the outside and did a quick lighting test before. Always do tests before you officially start gluing pieces together. I glued and then plastic welded both together. I misplaced the footage of me building the pieces together, so ha, yeah. Next time. I took my time standing the connecting areas and once it was flush, I moved to adding three layers of XCC 3D on just the blade portion. No need to do on the handle and hilt because we already did that. After the three layers, it is time to sand. Again, I know. I say this all the time and I'll say it now, the more sanding you put into your props, the better outcome you will have. Some of the darker colors, it is easier to hide some of the spots you missed, but with something like silver and gold, they show everything. So yes, I did put a lot more sanding into blade to get as smooth as possible. And don't forget about wet sanding. I started with 400 grit and then went up to 1000 grit. It really does make a difference, it's less abrasive when you add the water in, so it will make your print even smoother. You can run your hand along your piece after each grit to get a better idea of what each grit does. Now for the final touches. Painting was definitely the hardest part on this build. There's not really any transparent silvers that exist, so I ended up having to do several tests to see what paint would be transparent enough. I thought I found one, but it became super blotchy once I put it, put it on the actual sword, so I had to sand it off again. Yep, was a nightmare. I didn't get any footage of me painting the blade as it was 9pm in my garage and it was dark. I started with a matte clear coat on the blade portion which will fill in any of the micro scratches and make the print even smoother. After the first clear coat, I wet sanded it after with a 1000 grit and then did another layer of the clear coat on top. Seems like an extra step but it's definitely well worth it. And then after I used Tamiya Keller which is a transparent silver used for car models. Not exactly for this but it worked. I did about 5-6 to six light, very light layers of it. The nozzle needs to be far away from the blade so it doesn't create any streaks. It is better to do super light spray a lot of times in one heavy coat or you will be able to see that when the LEDs are turned on. After that, I gave the guard a spray of white primer and paint combo. Using this paint as a primer is a great way to hide any areas that you missed. After that is dry, it is time to paint the actual felt. I used my friend's suggestion on using Play-Doh for the smaller areas where it is hard to get tape in. It worked pretty well, just make sure you spend the time making the Play-Doh as even as possible on the sides. But nothing that touch-ups can't handle. I did go back after and repainted the blue because I decided I wanted something a little darker. The blue is from Creotex and the gold is an acrylic paint from PodFX that I diluted with airbrush thinner. Because it is gold, I did end up spraying a layer black base coat to help with the gold vibrance. After that, I went back to the symbols and made it a darker silver so it's more noticeable when the LEDs are off. And without further ado, here is the outcome.